Before I became my shaman's road, I experienced many tortures. I was very sick and I suffered greatly to become a shaman. My spirits dragged me everywhere and I suffered very much. If you obey the spirit's will, then you will become a shaman. But I didn't want to become a shaman and I had constant visions in my dreams. A voice forced me and dictated to me what I should do. Day and night there was no peace and I was afflicted with constant pain. So I had to become a shaman. This beautiful quote from Grandma Datika really raises an important issue for shamans to be, for people who are stepping on the shamanic path. It's what I refer to as initiation crisis or early shamanic illness. And I think we don't talk about this enough in our community, so hopefully this video will bring a little bit more information about it. Welcome to Sacred Gaia. My name is Natalia. I am a shamanic healer, medicine woman, animal communicator, and also tarot reader. And I hope that you will enjoy this video. In a lot of shamanic tradition, there is actually belief that a person does not make a conscious choice of becoming a shaman. And this is really much determined by the spirit's word. So there is a point in our life where the spirits and the voices become way more prominent. One of the things that we could be feeling is obviously that calling in the heart, but there are also other signs, omens and events happening around our lives that would be indicating that we are being called onto this path. What's really interesting is that at the very beginning, most of shamans to be actually will decline that calling. So if you are stepping onto this path, it really depends where you are on the spectrum, but you may be still in a place of huge resistance and not just wanting to do that. Or you may have accepted the call, but you're still not really sure how to really transform your life into manifesting that calling. Until you accept the calling, the spirits will continue communicating with you. And I don't wanna really go into much depth about free will because I think you can still say no to that calling and you can still resist it. The task would be then just to learn of how to live with the consequences of it because the spirits will be disappointed and you will be living in a constant tormenting, if you don't learn how to live with it, then the problems and these symptoms might get really escalated. The crisis will continue until you learn how to really deal with this new cognitive and new physical and emotional information that is really coming through to you. There is a, a whole journey which could last from weeks, months to even years and that really depends of what tools and techniques do you have already within yourself to deal with it? Uh, what support do you have in your community, so family and friends, and also whether you actually have a really good mentor. So let's talk a little bit more about how this shamanic illness actually looks like. I kind of split this into two parts. One is what's happening in your life as day to day what you experience and the other one is a little bit paranormal side to it. The shamanic initiation crisis starts very often manifesting itself through life shattering events and this is really um, all about day to day things that suddenly you will feel like they're falling apart. Your job, your career, you may stop enjoying your hobbies. Uh, your lifestyle suddenly makes you anxious. Relationships, friendships, you may feel even alienated from your own family. So these are kind of things that will ha start happening in a sequence and will put you in a place where you feel like you don't belong to that life anymore. It's like you don't belong to yourself. 
this is a very actually hard place to be in because what you will start feeling is like you're not good enough anymore for all these roles that you performed uh, in that life until now so you're not good as your daughter as a daughter as a son you're not good enough as a husband as a wife as a partner as a friend as a as a co-worker all of these things will start creeping in into your heart because you will feel like you're not doing things authentically and you're not 100 percent invested in it anymore but at the same time you may feel like to fulfill that other role that is coming in which is the shaman's role it's also something that you're not able to do because you're not good enough comparing yourself to everyone else you may not uh, be coming from an environment or society or communities that is traditionally considered shamanic you may not have practiced that you may not even look like one right so you will start feeling like you have no place in the world and this is a very dangerous place to be in because that's where depression starts coming in anxiety feeling alienated self-doubt and like a kind of lack of worth a self-worth right so this is already that phase where your day-to-day -day life starts to disintegrate starts to fall apart now on the top of that you have that paranormal part as well which means these activities will actually start increasing and that means you may start hearing spirits having visions dreams start seeing them as well that's kind of day and night but i think the night part is actually the worst because during the day you're very likely to find a lot of distractions you will still have to go to work you will still have to go and eat and cook and meet occasionally people but it's the night time where everything becomes silent and suddenly the spirit voices the dreams the visions the states in between become very very prominent and this is where after some time you will develop sleep deprivation potentially insomnia even fear of going into you know going to bed and falling asleep because you know that something is most likely to happen and yes this is on the border of uh, panic attacks uh, paranoia and medically some people would even call that as a schizophrenia but for the purpose of this video i'm actually going to leave that controversy around when the mental illness is actually a mental illness as we understand versus shamanic illness because actually there is a lot of research amongst anthropologists, psychiatrists that really make a difference between these two and they really um, they are actually huge uh, factors and differences to separate these two but before I diverse completely let's go back to the main topic shamanic crisis might actually last from few days unlikely most likely few weeks months or even years obviously the longer it lasts the more dangerous it becomes because if you don't have the right support if you don't have the right tools and techniques already incorporated in your life that will become very very unsettling especially as i said if you're still resisting the calling and be if you're still resisting interacting with that spirit world and if you're driven by fear now a lot of you will have a good kind of grounding practices already you may be meditating praying uh, you may be connected to earth and this is all amazing but i would think that a lot of you might not have enough support from your community friends or family because if you're coming from the typical western family society or community let's be honest shamanic practices are still not very very common and understood so this is where you will probably be drawn to looking for that support somewhere else and this is really great because you will need a support nobody should be alone on that journey even if you will have your alone vision quest in that journey you shouldn't feeling alone you should be able to always reach out to somebody and that's why it is important that all of us create that community and support each other throughout these periods of times now i want to talk about actually mentorship because even though initially you may be finding these 
moments of support, I think finding an experienced shaman, somebody that has gone through it, some sort of mentor, it will be critical to opening these paths for you. So they might not do the communication on your behalf with the spirits, but experienced shaman will really hold your hand through that spirit world and they will open the paths that are safe and they will hold the other paths that are still not safe for you. Because at this initial stage, we do become very vulnerable and because we are very often held in a place of um, uh, anxiety and fear and also a lot of just physical challenges oh actually i'll talk about that too but physical challenges we do become vulnerable to general spirit of work not just the one that want to work with us but also the one that perhaps want to feed of us so what the shamans will do what your mentor will do is really take you and 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 really guide you through that process and make sure that you're safe and protected um, until you're ready uh, completely to be independent um, healer. Physical evidence of that shamanic illness manifests itself through different diseases, conditions that suddenly appear in your body. You feel like your body is going through some changes that suddenly you feel tired and um, you have no energy. You may be um, having some weird conditions, especially things that really express emotional side of it, like in solar plexus. For women, it could be a lot of feminine um, energy that uh, is really unbalanced. Uh, skin issues, skin problems, accidents, even in extreme cases, near-death experiences as well. Like you could be having an accident just to give you that wake-up call. Now, I hope that for most of us is not actually that extreme, but you do have to watch these things in your body too, because when you start layering these symptoms, you realize that you're gonna go through personal death on all levels. It's all being treated as an opportunity. And again, going back to your mentoring, your shaman will help you to see these things as opportunities. So everything will be another door to put yourself back together, to be reprogrammed, to be rewired, and to really be freed from what's shaped you until now. You will free yourself from a lot of attachments that have been created for you or by you until now. First of all, you need to sort of understand where you are on your shamanic path. Are you still trying to understand whether you're being called to it and there is a things in your life that suddenly just becoming challenging and you're not sure why and you're still debating with yourself what that actually means to you? Or are you on a path where you accepted the call but you're not really sure what to do and you're scared of the consequences? Or you perhaps accepted the call and you're ready to do the work but you're still really unsure how to navigate through the spirit world, spirit world because it is quite unsettling. And depending where you are with this shamanic illness, uh, it will really help you to understand what things you can do for yourself. So of course, there will be a lot of patience, self-love that you have to practice. You'll have to practice uh, detachment. You'll have to practice letting go, release. But also there will be very practical things like really finding routine and discipline in your day, in your week that makes you feel grounded, connected to nature. I can't even stress how important that is going to be for you during that process, really connected to the nature and to yourself. Then also there will be moments where you may need another additional support, external support. Yes, from shamans and mentors, but also from plant medicine to really fill your spirit, your heart and your body with strength while you're going through that. And of course, anything like meditation, walks, exercising, all of that will just add to the bag of things that you can use to your own advantage. And just hold on there. Don't self doubt yourself. Don't feel like everyone else is judging you because actually a lot of us have gone through this and this is very difficult time where you will question yourself and you will even question your own sanity but once you get through this you will see that actually you will be more capable than 
at any other time in your life. You will be more valuable member of community and society. You'll be way more able to focus. You'll be way more able to be creative and you may even develop some interesting leadership skills. So this is actually where there is a difference between mental illness and shamanic illness because once you get through that shamanic illness, you'll see that this was just a temporary challenge and opportunity that elevated you to another level. And it's just almost as that personal death to be reborn again. I would really encourage you to stay in a place of self-love if you think you're going for shamanic illness. And I'm not saying don't go and seek professional help, uh, this is completely down to you and I always advise anyone that if you feel like that's what you need or if you feel like maybe it would be good to check, do that please. I'm also not scared to say that shamanic illness and crisis is actually different and I'm really convinced that a lot of us will get through it and will be amazing, amazing shamanic workers. So I hope that you will get through it, you will learn from it, you will get your insight, you will be reborn, you will be free and you will be powerful as a healer because we need people in this society, in this world to carry the work. For what I know it's, it's worth it and once you once you're on the other side of the tunnel, let's call it that way, you look back and you'll see how brave and courageous you are and how much you've learned and this period of time, you will really hold it very, very close to your heart. I do encourage all of you to share that experience, to talk to each other, to really be there for each other. And especially if you are listening to this video and you are actually an experienced shaman, please incorporate that into your courses, into your trainings. Please make people feel supported because it's not just about what to do and how to do things, but also how to go through that personal, huge transformation, feeling supported and loved. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Lots of love, my dear friends. Um, I hope that you're having a wonderful day. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, all other things that we all have to do on YouTube to support uh, content makers. So please do that for me too. If you'd like to connect with me in a different ways, I will leave the details in the description box below. But most of all, stay joyful, stay healthy, stay courageous and lots of love.